Hello everyone, I am Antonio Mastro Paolo from Universidad de la Svizzera Italiana and today I'm going to present you the following work studying the usage of text-to-text -text transfer transformer to support correlated tasks. Let's start. In the last couple of years, different papers have been published aiming at assessing to which extent deep learning techniques can be used to foster correlated tasks. Right here in this first work, Tufano and colleagues presented an empirical study of learning bug fix patches in the wild via neural machine translation in the context of Java methods. In this second work instead, Watson and colleague presented a deep learning approach, namely Atlas, for supporting assert statement generation for unit test cases. In this third work instead, presented at MSR 2020 by Hacker colleagues, the authors suggested a very interesting deep learning model for supporting the task of code summarization. And finally, in this fourth work, Tufan and colleagues uh, presented a model for learning how to mutate source code from bug fixes. These four tasks that I've briefly described to you are four correlated tasks that have been addressed with four different models. However, it turns out that recently in the literature, different multitask models have been proposed that, of course, can support a multitask setting. One of these is the T5, namely text-to-text -text transfer transformer, presented by Rafael a colleague from Google. The T5 model is an encoder-decoder model pre-trained and fine-tuned on a multitask mixture of unsupervised and supervised tasks where each task is converted into a text-to-text -text format and each task is preceded by a prefix to inform the model on the task at end. By taking a closer look at these characteristics, actually, we came up with the following research question. Is the T5 model a suitable model for supporting correlated tasks such as automatic bug fixing, injection of mutants, answer statement generation, a code summarization, to answer the following research question, we devised a four-step approach. Let's start with the first step. In the first step, we mainly focus on the creation of the pre-training dataset, starting from CodeSearchNet, this huge dataset released by UC and a colleague. CodeSearchNet includes different languages, Python, Go, and so on. We only focus on Java. Specifically, from the Java subsection, we extract all the Java methods, namely raw code, and the associated doc string, namely code comments. After that, we took these Java methods and we also apply an abstraction process with source to abs. Source to abs basically is an external tool that takes as input the Java method, in this case the raw code, and gives us output an abstracted version of it, as you can see down below. After that, we obtain the abstracted code, ending up with a number of pre-training instances that roughly is equal to 2.67 million. For the step number two, we are ready for pre-training the T5 model. In particular, we leverage the canonical self-supervised pre-training objective. This means that given an input, we randomly mask 15% of token and we ask the model to predict, to reconstruct in a way those masked token. The third step is focus on the collection and the preparation for the text-to-text -text task specific dataset, the fine-tuning part. In particular, starting from the data set that the authors released in the fourth paper that I've described to you at the beginning, we start to collect those data sets. And for example, here for the first work, the one related to bug fixes, we collect two data sets. Since the authors provided two data sets featuring different level of complexity when fixing a bug, then we collect only one data set for the task of code summarization the same for the mutant generation task, and finally, two datasets for the asset statement generation task, in which one dataset includes raw code and the other dataset includes an abstracted version of raw code. And finally, we are ready for fine-tuning the T5 pre-training model 
on the mixture of tasks, as you can see, bug fixing, code summarization, mutant generation, and search generation. And finally, we also get the results. Speaking about results, let me present you the results that we reach with the device approach at this point. So, starting from the automatic bug fixing task, as you can see on average on both data set, the TFF model is able to improve the baseline of 6.5 percentage point. When we consider the code summarization task, and specifically focusing on the blouse score, as you can see, the T5 model improved over the baseline of 5%. Instead, when we consider the accuracy at 1, there is an improvement of plus 8%. Switching to the automatic generation of assertion, the improvement are even bigger because, as you can see on average, there is an improvement that bumps up to 16.3%. And finally, for automatic generation of mutants, we have a slight improvement for the blue score. Instead, when we consider the accuracy at one, namely the perfect mutants, the improvements are quite remarkable of plus 11%. And now let's discuss in details the results for the automatic bug fixing task. As you can see here on the X axis, we have the beam width and on the Y axis, we have the accuracy. We are reporting the same exactly configuration in use by Tufan and colleagues in the original paper, where they basically have used the beam decoding mechanism for generating prediction. And as you can see again, here, what we have is that the TFF model is able to get an improvement over the baseline that is very interesting on each single beam width that we consider. When the authors push the envelope quite a bit, meaning the number of the to of token permitted is ranging from 50 to 100, the TFF model is still able to outperform the baseline when we consider a beam that ranges from 5 to 50. Switching task this time and talking about the automatic answer statement generation task. When the code is abstracted, there is still an improvement that the T5 model is able to convey, but is not that high. Instead, when we consider the raw code, where the token basically are not abstracted, the T5 model is able to get a very huge improvement over the baseline. To summarize, the TFF model achieved better performance overall uh, than the four baselines used for, used for comparison. However, here there is an important point that we have to clarify, that the TFF model used additional data for training that was not exploited by the baselines. Indeed, while the TFF model has been fine-tuned on the same dataset used for training the baselines approaches, it was also subject to a pre-training dataset that wasn't seen by the baselines. For this reason, part of our future work is to better investigate through an impact assessment analysis what was the role played by the pre-training and also to better analyze the extent to which the transfer learning helped. In closing today, I presented to you how we came up with the research question asking if the TFEV model is suitable for supporting code-related tasks then I presented to you the four-step approach that led us to the following results. And finally, I also laid out our next agenda and how we are thinking to strengthen this work. That being said, thank you very much for your attention. Hi again. Um, this is the third paper, third and last paper of today's session. Um, so. Antonio Mastropaolo and Simone Scalabrino are here with us, but Antonio will be uh, in charge of uh, answering all possible questions you may have. Um, so Antonio, we have a few questions so far. I will start with the first one. So Michael Prey is asking, how does T5 relate to other pre-training models that have been applied to code, like for example, CodeBird and PLBART? Okay, thank you, Michael, for the question. This is a very nice question. So uh, we frame the pre-trained in a way that uh, at the end is task agnostic, meaning that we randomly mask uh, a token, a generic token in the input, and then we ask the model to predict this specific token. 
We didn't frame the pre-training in a multitask setting like the Raphael colleagues actually uh, did in uh, a huge set of experiments uh, that they have done. And on top of that, I do not remember, to be honest, all the details of Colbert and Pierre Bart. But the main point, like I said, is that we frame the pre-training on, um, if you want, on a single task and in a task agnostic setting, just a denoising mask, in other words. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, we have another question from Man Yu Cho, and he's asking, what do you think to make the automation generation of a session to have such big improvement using T5 model compared to the rest of the tasks? Thank you, Man Yu, for your question. This is a very interesting question as well. And I do think that here the main point is that in general, uh, assertion are not so long, uh, let's say like um, a method. So this could be um, an int why the model performed better on this specific task compared to the, the other one. I don't know if this uh, reply to, to your question. You are mute, Sira, you are mute. We cannot hear you. <laughs> um, so I was saying that, sorry, uh, we don't have uh, quest more questions so far, okay? But we still have seven minutes to go. So I hope that more questions come in. In the meanwhile, I'm going to ask you a couple of more questions or maybe just one, depends on what we have. So um, when I checked the paper, um, I didn't see any badge on it. So um, I don't know if it's because if, uh, if you don't have, you didn't apply for one or if it's because uh, the preprint doesn't have it. So my first question is, um, if, is there an artifact associated to the paper? Do you mean the replication package? Yes. Yes, for sure. There is oh. a replication package associated to the paper. Okay. Um, could be in the reference, in the okay. references yeah. list. Yeah, yeah it's, I assume that it will be somewhere in the paper, but I did. Yep, I don't yep. recall to have seen that in the presentation. I just. Oh yeah, for sure. There is the a presentation. I just wanted to make sure. I assume the answer will be yes, but I, I just want, wanted to confirm. And yeah, for com just for confirmation, you didn't apply for for a badge, did you? What do you mean a badge? Yeah, one of those ACM badges that you can apply for. No, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, apply for. Okay, okay. Just we were just planning to, to do that. Okay. okay, just to know because I wasn't sure if uh, you maybe had what you applied and you got it, but mm -hmm. it, it was not in the paper yet because it was a preprint. So again, okay. just to make sure and just yeah, to know if you, okay. And since there are no more questions, I have one more question. So perhaps you can talk us a little bit more about the future work, about your future work related to what you have been doing. Um, how, do you, how do you plan to continue this uh, research? Okay, here the main point that we want to, uh, to assess, uh, like I said during the presentation, is to understand uh, which is the, the real impact of the transfer learning and uh, the pre-training uh, itself. So we are planning to we are planning to experiment more with the model. In particular, we want also to consider a setting in which uh, the pre-training is not done, is not completed. So just a fine-tuning setting with no pre-training, and on top of that, we are also thinking to do that on a single task ending uh, with three models, one for the code summarization, four models, sorry, one for the code summarization, one for the mutant generation, and the last two for bug fixing and last generation. In such a way, we can have a, a better uh, understanding of what's going on. And like I said, which is the real contribution of the transfer learning for code related tasks. Okay, thank you. For Thank you very much for your answer. So Miroslav Staron has a question. Um, so if you were to recommend us to continue with some of the models, which one is the most promising one in your opinion? Miroslav, are you referring to model for supporting code related task?
he has an answer. Okay. So I don't know. Yes. <laughs> He says yes. Okay, I think that the T5 model is a good starting point, uh, but there is, I think that there is still room to improve uh, the the T5 model itself. But there are also other interesting models that can be can be specific can be tailored uh, to specific code related task. If you want to go, let's say, in the wild, you just want to grab one model to perform multiple tasks at hand. Uh, I would say the T5 model is the way to go. Or if your idea is to to grab the best performing model and, like I said, tailor on specific task, then maybe you you want to to consider something that is much more specific. Okay, so I am telling people that we still have time to at least one more question question because we have like three minutes left. Mm -hmm. Um, so, well, Miroslav is Thank saying you. thanks, <laughs> uh, but if uh, there are no more questions, since I don't have any other questions for you, so let's wait for a few more seconds to see if some other question, new one pops up, but if not, I think we can finish the session. So since this is the last paper, we will finish with the whole session. And remember that you can always join the private discussion room and you can discuss with the authors there about the wonderful work that they have done and so much interesting. Okay, so no more questions so far. So thank you very much, Antonio and Simone, for being here. Thank you very much, Antonio, for your answers to the questions. And okay, so hope to see you all around in any other session. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. being the chair. Bye bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.